we had a good question about culture, how are we going to change the culture? And I'd like um, Bill and, and Jeff to be able to speak to that. Bill? Thanks, John. <clears throat> so, obviously, you know, I think Kim asked the question, how many? It's very difficult to know how many. We know, we know that we're hearing reports of horses dropping in the barn, not even dropping in the ring, dropping in the barn, being dropped in the barn as a result of, of intravenous injections of things such as magnesium and things like that. So, you know, we're, we're making an effort to try to get more information from people. And as John said, going to, an, <coughs> to uh, implementing some investigative uh, procedures to go down this road. But we also have to think about what are we doing in our sport? How are we defining winning? Is winning at all costs? Is winning at all costs and forget the welfare of the horse? John brought up the fact that there is um, <clears throat> legislation coming through Congress related to the racing industry. How would anybody in this room like if some senator, some congressman decides, you know what, I heard about this and I don't think this is right and we need federal legislation saying that no medications can be administered to any horses in any competition, whether it's show horses, race horses, etc. Would everybody be in favor of that? I think we have to police ourselves a little bit here, and we, as John said, we have to admit, there's an issue. It is not, in my mind, an issue where the majority of people are going off the reservation, but a minority of people are ruining your sport for you. And they're creating a situation that's going to lead us down a road where outside influences, such as the Humane Society, PETA, Congress, are going to come in and say, you know what? You are not regulating your industry properly. You are dealing with a horse. In this country, horses are pets for people. It's not like when you go to Europe and they are livestock and they are treated and, and dealt with as livestock in Europe. In the United States, people have a greater, to my mind, emotional attachment to these horses. <clears throat> and so you, you have a very emotional thing going on with horse slaughter. People are very divided about whether that should happen or not. People are going to become very divided about whether a horse should receive any medication, whether a horse should be ridden or not. This is not to scare you. This is to wake you up that something is happening out there. Look at what's happened in California, Florida, Kentucky about full disclosure on the sale of horses. Those that the states decided that you weren't regulating yourselves in those areas regarding the disclosure of everything that occurs in the transaction of a horse, the sale or lease of a horse. And now they've enacted state law where you can actually do time in jail if you don't follow the law. And actually it's making a difference in some of those, those areas. We had a, a meeting of a conduct committee uh, about a week ago, and one of the individuals said, you won't believe the difference in disclosure out here on the sale and transfer of horses in California. It is putting the people that behaved badly out of business, and it's putting the people that felt they needed to behave badly to be part of the group, it's giving them relief. Just what John said, we heard from some young professionals, you know what, just do something that puts it on a fair and level playing field so I don't feel compelled or driven in order to stay in business to have to go off the reservation and give my horse medications that I know aren't good for him and I don't really want to, but the culture of the sport is requiring me to do that. So we have to, we have to look at something to turn this around or we're gonna end up, if we continue to say, no, not a problem, not a problem. Oh, guess what, last year only two horses died. You know, we, we're going to be in trouble. It's, it's on the national map now. The New York Times article did not do anybody any favors other than it's making this discussion finally occur on a national level that needed to occur for a long time. Jeff? So <laughs> I don't want to say a lot because we're talking a lot, but um, I have plenty to do, uh, but obviously this is a whole big issue in our culture right now, and so I signed on to do this. I'm not quite sure why I did, but here I am. Um, it's really important. I, I would say that uh, the most important thing right now for us to understand is that the scene is actually changing out there. There is a, you know, it is a big deal. 
nothing is going to be the same. We have a very different future ahead of us. And we, uh, as, I guess, leaders of this sport, we need to uh, first admit that, as John said, and then we have to start to change the way we do things and how we do things and whatever, whether it's getting different horses, changing the judging system, whatever. But we need to adapt to the new scene. Because the one thing that we don't want to do is have somebody else regulate our sport. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> third thing that I think is really, the second thing that I think is really important is uh, the more I'm around these guys, the vets and the leaders of the USCF, the more I am learning and understanding that there is science behind what they're telling us. And uh, like, for instance, this AAEP paper that is on the table that we have here, that is a really interesting paper, and I urge you guys to read it because it will make a significant difference in how you look at things. Right? Uh, third major point to me is we are actually hurting our horses. We are actually killing our horses. Uh, Kim, it's happening a lot more than we care to admit, but it is happening out there. I'm alarmed at how many deaths there are in a year at the horse show. And I think that we're also hurting our sports. Somebody sent me the other day an article from Europe that had to do with, uh, they were talking to dealers in Europe, please don't sell your horses to America because all they do is drug them, jump them, work them until they fall over dead, and then they come back and buy more horses. That's alarming that we're getting to the European market. But I have to say the thing that was the most telling to me, and John spoke to it earlier, is when I started asking people to come to this meeting today, I cannot tell you how many, and I mean top, top young professionals, said to me, please, please help us figure this out because we don't feel like we compete without doing things to our horses that we don't want to do. So. The fact that the, the young, successful, top professionals are as concerned about this, I think, is really important, and we really have to listen to them as well. So, 